now we come to a concept called compressibility factor okay compressibility factor which is which is denoted by z and which is defined as as pv upon nrt pv into upon nrt these are the observed values okay these are the observed values now for an ideal gas see we have the equation pv is equal to nrt okay now for an ideal gas what happens for an ideal gas what happens for an ideal gas pv is equal to nrt okay which is equal to nrt so what happens therefore pv upon nrt is equal to 1 <coughs> and it is this which is z so for an ideal gas you expect the z value to be 1 mhm why do you define compressibility factor as pv upon why why have we defined it become clear to find the deviation from the ideal first of all this is the factor because because it is it is it is unitless right now now for an ideal gas let us let us try to to see what happens for an ideal gas it is it is one no slow is it slow no no this is not the slow this is the value for an ideal gas because there the p into v the 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 product will be will be the same as nrt right now what happens for a real gas this is uh, how have we plotted it this is my p and this is my z <coughs> okay that is pv upon an rt <clears throat> what had we seen the value of p versus pv as here so we had seen that pv for for an ideal gas is this so this was supposed to be the ideal gas how was my p into v value changing this was for an h2 this was for an he and this was for a co and i think this was for maybe ch4 maybe uh, it's not to scale just to show the nature of it could be something like this 
This was P versus PV diagram. Okay. Now, what is compressibility? Amount to which you can? Comp yes, compared to its ideal behavior. So what are we trying to do? We have kept the NRT which is, NRT is what? A constant. Okay, this is something that is changing. Right. This is something that is, and changes like this. The PV that you have put above, it changes. Okay. I'll, I'll soon come to that. You'll immediately understand. Now, if I start plotting this, what happens? Here I was plotting PV. Here I am plotting PV upon NRT. What is constant? NRT is a constant. Things are happening at a constant temperature. So, PV upon NRT graph and the P versus PV graph, what do you think about them? They should look alike. They should look alike. Correct. So, so for, for a hydrogen, it is something like that. Okay? And for a for, for for methane, it is for for hydrogen it is like that. For for nitrogen, it is it is just keeps like this and then goes like that, right? Okay. For oxygen, for oxygen, it. Kind of goes like that. Okay. This is oxygen. And then, and then CH4 it goes like that. And CO2 it goes like that. So, this is O2. This is CH4. This is, yeah, this is CH4 and this is CO2. Okay. Now, what is happening at the higher pressure? What is happening at the higher pressure? Huh? The Z is increasing. The Z is increasing. Now, now what, what is actually happening? What is happening there? What is happening as you have increased P? You have increased, increased P. No, say, say what happens for H2? It increases. It increases. Your compressibility increases. Okay. Why should it increase? Why should the gas become more compressible? Compared to when it was ideal. When the intermolecular forces increase. So if they increase and you try to compress, they'll get compressed more. If there was no intermolecular force, no intermolecular force, and by intermolecular force I mean intermolecular attraction. So, they will be less compressible. 
So what is it showing? It says that your compressibility remains the same throughout the pressure, but here as the molecules start coming together, they start coming together, the, the, the value of their, the, the intramolecular attraction, it goes up in such a manner that their, their tendency towards compression goes up. That's only for H2, right? So, Not for these. No, that happens later. That happens later. That happens later. Fine. That happens later. But at higher pressures, all the gases become more compressible than you had expected them to be when there was no intermolecular attraction. So we are kind of comparing it with the case when there was no intermolecular attraction. Understand? And it's a fair enough com comparison, is it not? It's a fair enough comparison. Okay. We, we will soon see what it what it actually means also right don't worry so 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 it tells us in a sense if z has become greater than 1 it tells you what that the gases are more compressible compared to their their ideal counterpart and by ideal counterpart it does not say that there are still gases there's another hydrogen which which does not show any attraction had it not shown any attraction had it not shown any attraction, then how are you behaving? Suppose, let, let us try to understand. Suppose, instead of intermolecular attraction, these gases would have developed intermolecular repulsion. Suppose, suppose, then what, what would you, what would have happened? That you try to press it and it will it will kind of bounce back. So its ability to be compressed, that is the compressibility would have gone down compared to the ideal. So it, it would have kind of gone down. Understand? Hmm? Yes, Z would have dived down. Z would have gone down. Like this, as, as this is behaving at, at lower pressure. So, where does, how does the intermolecular force affect it? Because if it's going down, then it's going up at some pressure. Because when they start <coughs> coming closer together, why am I bothered? What is it showing, by the way? What is it showing? Where is the intermolecular force the highest? Where is it? Is it the highest? In this gas, or this gas, or this, or this, or this? Hmm? Till this point, it, here it is H2. After that, N2 takes over. Correct. It's aminely. Uh, uh, Amenability to be compressed is more. It's more amenable to be compressed. It's more amenable to compression. Right. Hmm? It's more amenable to compression. Why should that happen? The intermolecular force. Correct. There, there's another interpretation to it that will also make things clearer. But this is how the Z varies. So at for for higher P, for high P, for high pressure, Z is inevitably greater than one. Since 
the intermolecular intermolecular attraction attractive force since the intermolecular attractive force leads to easier compression okay so greater the value of z for a gas at the same other conditions greater it is greater is the compressibility at that point okay so so higher is the value of z for a gas at a particular temperature higher is the higher is its tendency to be compressed at that pressure compared to its ideal gas counterpart again again i'd like to clarify when i say ideal gas counterpart it is not some other gas which behaves ideally at that pressure but had it behaved like that fine had it behaved like that 